Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Caregiver Crosswalk, Dementia Care Consulting, Never Roam Alone. And good afternoon. Welcome to Life Fun Rehearsed. My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in life transitions, downsizing in the senior living industry. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist specializing in grief and loss. Coming right up on the first half of today's show, Julie Kenville, president of the MUHC Foundation. Hear how she transformed the foundation by dreaming big. Uh, Corey, we have to announce our brand new uh, co-sponsor of Life on Rehearse. We're very, very proud uh, to have this new co-sponsor, Caregiver Crosswalk, such an incredible company run by its founder and president, Claire Webster. Caregiver Crosswalk is a consulting firm that provides education and support services to help individuals navigate the journey of Alzheimer's disease and or dementia-related illness. And we both know Claire uh, Corey. That's true, that's true. She is amazing at what she does. She's also the founder and ambassador of the McGill Dementia Education Program and McGill Cares, a weekly webcast series designed to support family caregivers. We're very uh, proud and very pleased to have Claire and Caregiver Crosswalk along board with Leanna Senior Transition Support as the two co-sponsors of uh, Life Unrehearsed. So welcome aboard, Claire. So excited to have her here and I'm sure we're going to have her on again and she's just a plethora of knowledge so um it's it's a it's a great connection it certainly is what do we have coming up on the second half on the second half of the show today well she was widowed at 43 with two young children how does one even manage their grief when you're trying to figure out this at at the same time as grieve and parent well we're going to ask jenny liss who created the widow parent podcast she's going to help us and by sharing that podcast, what she does to help other widowed parents, and also herself. That's right. Yeah, such an inspirational story. So we'll be hearing from Jenny after the 4.30 news. All right, let's hear from uh, Julie Kenville. Julie is the president of the McGill University Health Center Foundation. In 2018, Julie was named one of the top 100 most powerful women in Canada by the Women's Executive Network. Julie's commitment to supporting excellence in healthcare through philanthropy and her strong leadership style have helped substantially grow the foundation's revenues and donor base. You may have also recently heard Julie on CJD as she is the host of a new show called Health Matters, which is aired every Sunday at 12 noon. Julie, welcome to Life Unrehearsed. Thank you so much for the invitation. Well, thanks for coming on, and congratulations uh, to getting that show. We're going to talk a little bit uh, later, uh, but good for you and good for the MUHC Foundation. Now, Julie, you have had quite the career already. (laughs) Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, professional journey? Well, actually, you know, as a child, my big dream was of changing the world, and as a foreign correspondent, and I went to journalism school and started off actually at CJD. I was uh, doing the night news and did uh, worked as a researcher for a couple of years, uh, then uh, uh, city TV, and, and then moved to print as associate editor of the Chronicle newspaper in the West Island. But honestly, I was getting so frustrated about constantly reporting on major issues in the community, and, and no one seemed to be fixing them. So uh, I joined Russell Williams, who was M&A for Nelligan at the time, and Russ was a, a true community leader who was always focused on actions and impact. And thanks to his mentoring, I was recruited by Philippe Couillard, who was health minister at the time, and I ran a number of exciting national files, including the uh, Save the Shriners campaign and the smoking ban in uh, restaurants and bars. And eventually I joined the MUHC to work on the construction of the new hospital, because you know, how many times in one's life do we get to build a brand new uh, world-renowned hospital? And I, of course, fell in love with this incredible institution and haven't been able to tear myself away ever since. (laughs) Well, they're certainly very lucky to to have you. So I want to go back to something Matt said, because honestly, if you were sitting in the studio with me, I would go, could I touch you? (laughs) 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 Because it's very impressive to hear that you, in 2018, were named one of Canada's most powerful women, Top 100, uh, top 100 uh, award by the Women, uh, Women's Executive Network. So obviously, congratulations on that. You met um, women from all over um, at this event in Toronto. You got to tell us what that was like. You know, Corey, this nomination really did change my life. And, and I wasn't expecting it when I first got the call to say that, uh, that I had been named. You know, when you spend years grinding and trying to balance family and executive functions and uh, you make important sacrifices and you always, always feel guilty. 
you face so mm-hmm. much judgment, especially from other women. And, uh, and honestly, it can be extremely isolating. So when I met the other top 100 women in Toronto, uh, they all had similar struggles and similar stories, and everyone faced the same kind of judgment. It created kind of a support group, and, and I realized in meeting them that I actually hadn't really made any sacrifices. I made choices. Mm-hmm. And, and those choices meant that my daughter can see running a business as an option. And children learn more from what they see than what we tell them. So we need to give them role models so that they can believe that they can access these kinds of careers. So, you know, Corey, I'm not picking up my kids at 3.30 right after school. I may not be baking cookies uh, as often as others, but I am having an impact on my community, and that's a valued contribution in our society, even for a mother. And always a, a difficult uh, choice, I'm sure. And you have your days where you're second guessing, but um, the the path you're leading and uh, um, it, you are an inspiration, I'm sure, to your kids. Two wonderful uh, children, uh, Julie. And we're talking uh, with Julie Kenville, president of MUHC Foundation, here on Life on Rehearse with Corey and Matt. And um, Julie. Let's talk about, you do a lot of public speaking, and what is dear to your heart, Your heart, especially, is, is women, and particularly young women. And, and could you share a little bit more about your passion about uh, young women and, and making them the best they can be? Thank you, Mata. You know, women need role models. Men need role models, too. But women have mostly had male role models. And in fact, I'm very honest with you, I've only ever had male mentors in my career. I've been blessed to have so many of them. But the conversation is so different. So today I mentor many young women. um, And I always have a conversation that's very different because you've got to look not only at the career, but you also have to look at the family life and the balancing act. Because if women burn out, if mothers burn out, then they are going to abandon their careers. And you saw this during the pandemic. You know, thousands of women across this country have abandoned their careers to be able to care for the children and their family as daycares and schools shut down. So the number one message I tell young women is you can have a family, you can have a successful career, but you have to ask for help. And getting help with cleaning and cooking and other things that you can give up doesn't make you a bad mother. It just makes you more organized. You need to get mentors. You have to find people who will coach you and guide you and promote your career. You know, while women have been working away in their offices, men are networking. And your career opportunities are, are completely impacted by the quality of your network. I could, I could go on all afternoon, Matt, as you can see. <laughs> and, uh, and my daughter, uh, Victoria, poor girl, I, I send her constant messages and quotes uh, pretty much on a daily basis about hope and the need to take action to make the world a better place. So uh, hopefully she will remember those messages as she grows up. I think you are a wonderful role model. We're talking with Julie Kenville, the president of the MUHC, and she is sharing with us just her uh, some very important words of wisdom about the whole process and and how you do what you do. Speaking of which, we're going to have to head out for a traffic uh, update, but when we come back, you have this vision of dreaming big, so we want to hear about some of the impressive initiatives that you have offered in terms of what that means Life Unrehearsed, brought to you by Leanna Senior Transition Support, specialists in downsizing and seniors' residences. Welcome back to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota, along with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking with Julie Kenville, president of the MUHC Foundation. Julie, you are taking the MUHC Foundation to a whole new level by your, quote on air quotes, dreaming big. I want to know a little bit about what your those initiatives are and what you're in, uh, you've been implementing. Yeah, thank you, Corey. You know, philanthropy has been pretty hard hit in the pandemic. I know a lot of other businesses have, but um, you know, when thousands of Canadians lose their jobs and families are concerned about their retirements and their investments, um, it does impact philanthropy. We are very lucky. We we are extremely touched by the support of the community towards the pandemic response. More than $5 million has been raised since March to support more than 50 research projects right here at the MUHC and to support laboratories that allowed us to truly analyze the the virus and start to uh, create more targeted therapies. So we've supported vaccine development, medication trials, improved testing. I especially want to take this opportunity to thank the three families who got together to launch the Emergency Response Fund, uh, the Hewitt family, the Trotte family, and the Doggone Foundation. Uh, it's so important to mention that um, 
These contributions, the more than $5 million that have been invested at the MUHC, have actually helped the MUHC and McGill secure more than $40 million in federal grants. Uh, and as you've probably heard, the um, we have a great representation in the task force, the federal task force against COVID, and the secretariat that supports it is based out of uh, McGill. So, uh, so big thank you to the community for for helping us. Now it's time to to shift gears and, and to come back to the other priorities. There are still, you know, one in two men in this country who are touched by cancer. Uh, the numbers for cardiovascular care one in five. So we we do need to start focusing our attention and our efforts on these important areas. Talking with Julie Kenville, president of the MHC Foundation. Uh, we'd be remiss, Julie. Uh, one of your biggest strengths is is building uh, an incredible team, and uh, you continue to do so. So, congratulations! Some big hiring hires uh, these days, and um, it, it it is all about the team. But, Julie, I want to talk a little bit more about fundraising. This is uh, you have a tremendous budget. Uh, um, uh, you know in the 20, 25, 27 million dollar range, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, I'm on the board of directors of Nova West Island, a smaller nonprofit in the West Island, very valuable to, to many uh, community members. And we have the same challenges of, of fundraising, especially during the pandemic. You have been doing some incredible work raising funds through different fundraising initiatives. Can you share a little bit more about what you're doing? Yeah, we actually, we had $32 million in revenue last year. Um, this is, is a big transformation. Uh, we started off at $16 million five years ago when I took over the foundation. So we've done extremely well. And what we've seen, Matt, is that people are really um, interested in focusing on curing disease. And that's the role of an academic hospital, right? Uh, you, you know, physicians, they, a good physician will uh, be able to treat the person in front of them. But an academic hospital, a clinical uh, scientist, is responsible for always going above and beyond and trying to cure disease. So what have we done to support them? We've started a lot of conversations with Canadians about the potential impact they can have and their families can, can have. Uh, many have chosen to contribute through their estates. Uh, rather than leave a huge amount to uh, the government, they have uh, given something to their community to ensure that they can help uh, cure that disease. Um, we, we of course, are not hosting any galas or cocktails at this mm -hmm. time, but there are so many members of the community who have created uh, fundraising initiatives online and have reached out to their own networks and their own community to be able to help us uh, target certain medical uh, mysteries. Lots of things happening uh, right now in the community. I love what you're doing, and I know the. I think everyone can understand how valuable the work is. You mentioned both the financially to do the research, but also the academic piece, and uh, and just just the ability to help so many through the work you're doing. So I think I'm, I want to not switch gears, but talk a little bit about the fact that. Part of this education is uh, through, I think, Health Matters. Your recently CJAD introduced your, a new show on Sundays at 12 noon, and it's hosted by you. It's called Health Matters. So obviously, congratulations. Let's talk a little bit about the show. Yeah, the idea behind that is this unprecedented amount of misinformation on social media about the pandemic. It's actually mind-boggling and terrifying. And uh, our community was looking for, for facts from the experts uh, so that they can better protect their families. And by the way, Facebook is absolutely not where you should be getting your medical information. <laughs> right, yeah. So we decided we needed to take action. And we launched Health Matters uh, initially as a podcast and, and then uh, through CJD to bring the experts to the community. And we're answering your questions, uh, first about COVID, but of course about other medical mysteries. Most Montrealers don't even know that the MUHC is the largest academic hospital in the province and, and one of the top three in the country. So, um, and, and what does that mean? That means that we in Montreal can recruit some of the top clinician scientists to care for our own community. It also means that we can take a leadership role in curing disease. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure you can feel it. I'm a bit of a science junkie and, <laughs> and I'm so excited that, that the show gives me an opportunity to share that passion. Talking with MUHC Foundation, Julie Canville. Um, Julie, you do so much. I don't know how you balance your time. Um, and I guess I'll talk about time in about 30 seconds or so. President of MUHC Foundation, you now have the show on, on Health Matters. You are a mom of two wonderful kids. How do you find a way to balance it all? And how can our listeners learn from you? 
<laughs> ask for help. <laughs> there uh, you go. I have yeah. a, a, until the pandemic hit, and I think that that's what made the pandemic so difficult for all of us. Um, before the pandemic hit, I had a support network of friends and family who could uh, help me on days and, and afternoons where I couldn't necessarily meet my, my, my duties as mom. Um, now we are left on our own trying to manage, and we do. And we know that this is that the end is near if we just stick together and, uh, and uh, end this pandemic together. Well, you, you you said it. You said it very quickly. Who's your role model? Oh, Madeline <laughs> Albright uh, would definitely okay. be at the top of that. Okay, um, <laughs> very inspirational. <laughs> Good choice, Good absolutely. Choice. And um, so, Julie, thank you very much. Um, and of course, anyone, if you, they want to find out more or donate to the MUHC Foundation, I guess, uh, what's the website? Um, it's muhcfoundation.com, and, uh, and we hope to hear from everyone. All Please right. help us dream big. Thank you very much, Julie, and wishing you uh, all the best with the foundation and, of course, the Health Matters uh, radio show. Uh, Corey, what do we have coming up next? Coming up, Jenny List was widowed at 43. How did she cope? She started a podcast to help other widows manage their grief. We're going to hear about that after the 4.30 news.